Thank you. Um, and Jerry, we're just going to ask like uh, four questions. Um, and it's going to be one minute a piece uh, for you because you're I don't get the debate. You, <laughs> you're your, own, you're your own man. You're your own man. You can have both sides. Well, uh, let, let's, let's talk a minute about the convention center. Okay. There's always discussion about the convention center. Too big, too small, uh, needs to be renovated. New ballroom, no ballroom. Are you satisfied with the convention center plans as it stands now? What would you do? Well, the plans as they stand now are being considered. Um, so obviously I'm not happy with what we have because it's underserving the needs of the community. And I'm talking about the greater community. So we've already had a study that's been conducted uh, and it is now being evaluated by Architect Konica who will look at everything that was recommended and try and design a plan and come up with a budget. Uh, once we see that, which will be sometime uh, probably the spring of next year, we'll be able to move forward and build consensus with the county in order to fund it. And uh, I believe we have the commitment of the county, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing the improvements. that will be quite significant. Condo foreclosures. You've been a big advocate of uh, uh, working with Tallahassee to uh, particularly see that banks um, uh, come to step up to the plate in helping in the foreclosure crisis. Where do you see that process? Do you think there's going to be something major happening statewide or not at all? Well, it, certainly it has to happen at the state level. As much as we would love to wave a wand in Miami Beach and make it happen, we, we can't. All I can tell you is that I will be fighting uh, again this year. Uh, I don't want to hold out a lot of hope that, uh, that you know, powers to be in uh, Tallahassee will, will be that much more responsive this year. However, uh, we, that doesn't mean you don't give up and, and uh, keep fighting for it. Uh, there are a lot of people statewide throughout the country that are suffering. And, and it's beyond me to uh, understand how the leadership in Tallahassee could snub their nose when we have so many people throughout our state that are suffering. And it's not just condominiums, it's, it's other home associations, it's uh, single family homes. So I plan this year to uh, hold a meeting in December and uh, call to arms and try and uh, get buses to go to Tallahassee from around the state to demonstrate up there and call attention to it. One of the, one of the issues um, that's always uh, stood out, and you don't hear about it so much today as you did in the past, friction between Miami Beach, City of Miami, or Miami-Dade County officials. How would you describe the relationship between Miami, D Miami Beach and Miami-Dade County? Does Miami Beach get its fair share? Well, that's, that's a mixed bag of questions there, if I may. I'm going to parse it a little bit. I think the relationship is excellent. Uh, it is uh, largely attributed to our Mayor Maddie Herrera Bauer when she was elected, as she does in our city and with our commission. Uh, she brings a calm and a soothing and, uh, you know, not, not a feisty kind of uh, approach. And, uh, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to get angry with Maddie. Sometimes we don't, where are you, Maddie? Sometimes we don't agree on things, you know, but you got to love her. So uh, I think the relationship uh, with our manager and the administration, you know, is, is very good. There's always tension, but tension isn't always bad either. Okay. Um, one of the things um, that we talk about is the uh, helping small businesses. Uh, small businesses, for one, can't get bank loans today. So how can Miami Beach provide incentives or help ameliorate the situation? for small business owners. Is there anything within Miami Beach's power to do that? That's really, uh, that's really tough. Uh, one of the things, it's not the exact question you're asking, uh, but one of the things that I think businesses have difficult time with is dealing with the uh, code inspections, uh, the building department inspections and the fire inspections, and it stops them in their tracks. Uh, that's something we need to continue to work on. It's, it's uh, so frustrating for a business that's either in business or starting to open a business to, to spend money, time is money, and, and to be stymied when one inspector comes out and tells you, you need to do this, this, and this. The business owner does this, this, and this, and lo and behold, a second inspector comes out and gives them a whole new list of things to do. So the problem lies with the, ins with, with, with the inspectors, with the department the who, is, who aren't well trained. Well, I, I'm not sure that it's the training, uh, but it's the lack of consistency at least. So maybe they're not consistently applying the rules. And I think that's something that the administration and, and the commission needs to uh, evaluate because that stops and hurts businesses. And the, re the reputation that we have, I hear it all the time, is that 
if I would have known, I would have never come to Miami Beach. And that's horrible. We have to get to the bottom of that. There are so many people who don't want to open a business or wish they hadn't tried to open a business. And that's largely the problem. And one last question to you, uh, which is a question that uh, we, we can't escape. Pension costs continue to rise. At the same time, property values continue to decrease. 2010 doesn't look to be a promising year. Is Miami Beach going to have to cut services or lay off personnel in order to maintain or keep a balanced budget? Okay, again, that, that's kind of a multi-question. I have to take it in, in, in different phases. Number one, I can't tell you yet whether we need to lay off or we won't need to lay off. I can tell you, though, that we will do what we need to do to provide the highest level of service to the community. Uh, if it does require layoffs, we'll, we'll make those decisions. As far as the pension uh, goes, the pension issue is something that we have been dealing with in executive sessions. Uh, it is a subject to negotiation, and we are all under a cone of silence, so I'm not at liberty, unfortunately, to tell you what direction the Commission has come up with, and we've given the uh, administration specific direction as to what we feel they need to accomplish in bargaining. Um, if I told you, they'd have to shoot me. We don't, we don't want to do that. You're only panelists for this group. Um, one closing, closing thoughts for you, 30 seconds. Why should people go out and vote for you? Well, you know, I, I really pledged myself in the first four years to providing service to the community. I think I've done a pretty good job of that. I'm always there for you. I've delivered the promises that I made. I think it's important that you have some sense of consistency on the commission and with the open seats that we have and with three commissioners that were just elected two years ago. I believe I bring a level of consistency and consensus building ability and that's why I'm proud to say, I don't know if it's ever happened before, but I have the mayor and all five of my other fellow commissioners who have endorsed my candidacy. Wonderful. Thank you so very much.